Hello, this is a Bechstein Model 3 Grand Piano that's 240 centimetres long, made in approximately 1892. It's right next to this Bechstein Model 5, which is 2 metres long, one that we're constantly sourcing and restoring. The Bechstein Model 3 is far less common, and we do love to source these and fully restore them. Um, it's a musician's favourite instrument, or one of the favourite instruments for musicians and certainly for myself I love the tone and the action on these pianos and we featured one recently that we compared with the Bursendorfer Imperial obviously that's a longer piano so uh, not so, not quite as rich as that but the, the rich tone of this piano both generally because the soundboard is is bigger on a, a, a larger piano and also the bass obviously if we just listen to bottom C here That has a very long string, so therefore has a rich, deep bass. If we compare that to the Model 5, of course, the richness of the bass is not the only important thing on a piano, in fact the most important thing is the, the melody area around here. And both the touch and the tone are, are exquisite really. This is the Model 5. This is slightly brighter, it's to do with hammers as well, the brightness, but you don't get the, the, the richness quite of the longer piano. This is restored in exactly the same way as the Model 5, a new rest plank. We've done so many of uh, these Bechstein grounds because we're particularly fond of them. Um, the number here is the number underneath the piano, um, which dates it. We've got a comparison of serial numbers. Unfortunately, serial numbers are so often missing here. They should be here on the Becksteins, but very often they fade and they just get rubbed off. Um, so if you look under your piano, if you've got a low number, it might well be that that's the number under the piano and it's not the serial number. So it's very important to check that. So that dates at about 1892, according to our cross-reference that we've got. Um, the soundboard here has been shimmed. You can see, if you look at the, the brighter, sorry, the lighter colour, uh, wood there, that, that, those are shims and that's commonly done when a piano is fully restored that's what we will always do and in the trade is generally done um, so it's very common work. When you can see the uh, the dampers here, um, new dampers, uh, you need to cut dampers off, um, it's just a technical point for technicians I'm sure you know that, um, they, they're they need trimming because otherwise they, they dig too far into the strings and they can cause a little bit of buzzing or just touching the string when they come up and down Something we like to do is get slightly better damping by the normally wedge dampers stop about well there the, the, the front is, is is not wedged but the back is wedged here um, and so we put extra wedges in, on the back here right up to here this is often done in the trade nowadays to, to get cleaner damping especially if you want very clean playing and very good cut off then that gives maximum cut off really and you don't need them up at the top end here. So the, the front is flat here um, and the back is wedged. Uh, that's uh, really helpful, I think, to get better damping. Uh, the original ivory keys have been replaced. That's really more commonly done now. And uh, if a piano is going to be exported, even if you just sell a piano, you have to register the ivory. If you export, it can be really difficult, especially for the USA is one area which is difficult. You can't export at all ivory, it seems, or it's very difficult. You can get a certificate, but it doesn't always uh, guarantee you're going to get through. So changing the ivories, apparently Steinway automatically changed all their ivories. So we've heard from, from Steinways themselves so that's uh, something we would normally do when we fully restore. We did actually find a number under the cheeks here, 10947, but that's also not the serial number. Uh, totally incorrect for serial number. Should be around about 30 something or 33 three at the beginning there. And that would date it for 1892. So um, that's not relevant to the piano either. There's a the number under the piano. It always enlarged, largely stamped on, embossed on. Uh, can be along here, can be on any of these struts really. That's quite a common place for it to be. Just want to look at the bass strings here. They're coned beautifully. Um, strings aren't always coned. It's usually uh, 
good string makers wanting to look as pretty as possible and very often cones them. There's a new rest plank here. Um, just wanted to admire this a bit, the, the work that's been done by technicians. Uh, really appreciate that. And my job's usually just to finish it off, make sure it's, well, initially to say what we'd like to, done on the piano and then uh, to just finish it off, make sure the damping's very clean. <laughs> Which it is, there's very, very little to do on this one. Now it's come to the showroom. It's slightly longer, that one. So I want to tidy them up as much as possible. This one's had the replacement uh, capstans in place of the tied action. That's uh, commonly done, something we've shown many times before. That's what these little round things are. They were uh, There was a rocker here, rocker system here before. And uh, this is... Uh, much better, f much more technician friendly. The rocker system works just as well actually, but it's much harder to, well it takes longer to adjust accurately. So it's been restored with uh, Arbel, Arbel levers here and hammer shanks and rollers and Arbel bio felt they call it, natural felt. It's the best quality one really that they supply and uh, obviously we're trying to do the best for this really top quality piano. There's no wear on the hammers at all yet. There's just slight indentations there. Um, we'd like to mark them to voice the inner quarter pedal. Actually, there may be enough marks on them to do that. You need to have clear lines and then you voice in between for the inner quarter pedal. The regulation's nearly as uh, fine as we can get it. So if we press, this is middle C by the way, and um, it should go as far as possible uh, before it set, sets off and comes back again. Um, and the, all, almost exactly the same. We may be able to get uh, half a millimetre, one millimetre closer than that. I'm not sure that we'd be able to improve on that. And the drop screw, um, again, as close as possible with it working properly, so you don't want it to double hit. And I think that's probably as good as it's going to get. So this is the set off here. Um, if I was going to readjust it, I'd take it as far as possible so it doesn't work properly and then take it back again. So this would be done in that direction to make it finer and then in the other direction to make it less fine and then get it as good as possible within mar safety margin so it works properly. So looking at the assessment sheet, normally there's several things we're going to put down as things we'd like to. Uh, to refine a little bit, but fine voicing and tuning, voicing for the inner quarter pedal, um, there's not very much to do, and even the weighting um, is almost as perfect as you can get. That's within the margins of perfection that we'd expect, so uh, around about 50 in the centre, 40, uh, 50, 52, 54, 55 is a little bit high, we might just lubricate the um, the knuckle there just to get it down a little bit but really pretty pretty accurate looking at middle C there 51 that that's wonderful really so let's just watch that weight go down this is 51 grams and it's just gently going down so uh, perfect perfectly weighted so very encouraged and very grateful for this piano and um, just want to compare it with some others and then we'll listen to it as well I'm going to play them all gently just because uh, it is the gentle tone on this piano. Uh, you can play loud, uh, you can play loud on many pianos and get a very brash loud sound, but the, it's the gentle sound that, that really appeals to me and also the, the, the touch is uh, exquisite. It's my one of my favourite touches is Beckstein's I've mentioned before. This is the Model 5. And here we have a new 48179. <laughs> So that's a Beckstein Model 3 Grand Piano, 240 centimetres long, made in 1892. Now this period of Beckstein is particularly special really.
and they restore and become just like a new piano and have just as much longevity, if not more, than a new piano, depending on where the new piano was made. So West German pianos are so well made, really, so um, you can have total confidence in these. Tennis sings beautifully as well as the treble. And very sensitive and fluid action. And the touch weighting is just perfect really. And of course extremely rich bass. So we're really grateful and if we get one of these to restore and I really can encourage you, if you want a, a large domestic piano with a, a tremendous touch, certainly as good as a new piano, if not better, I believe that very strongly. And the touch on these older Becksteins, if, when they're restored, is, is as good, second to none, really. And I'm playing gently now, just to show you what sort of control you can get. By the way, there's plenty of leg room here. I didn't mention that before. And also the pedals are low. So if you're a tall person, you could actually increase, if you want to do the, car the caster, sorry, put ca caster cups under the casters and increase uh, the leg room. But there is already plenty of leg room uh, and the pedals are low. So your angle on your feet isn't too great. Just playing a bit of Moonlight Sonata just to show you how much control there is really and how much you can rely on the action. Thank you very much for listening. If you're interested, please do write to us, info at robertspianos.com.